Sunday afternoon and we're down on the plot again. It's quite nice and sunny, although last night was pretty cold. You can tell summer's winding down. So jobs for today. Martin's going to try digging the last of the potatoes in this bed. What are the varieties? Um, Kestrel and Cara. Kestrel, the middle row. Yeah. Cara. Cara this one. Yeah. There's some Vivaldi in the middle. Yeah. Right far end, and then Sarpo Mira. Yeah. Okay. So, what am I going to do? Well, I've already cleared this little bed down here where last year I planted or I rather sowed some hardy annual seeds over autumn. I'm going to use the bed in the same way again this year. So my job now is to take off the weed control fabric and dig it over. At the end of the row we've got quite a big batch of horseradish and the noise you can hear is our plot neighbour busy mowing his paths. I think we're the only two plots with anybody on today. Anyway, I'll get started and we'll come back again later to show you how we've got on. Potato harvesting progress report. Got weed control fabric back. I've started digging cara and kestrel. This is what they look like next to one another in the ground. So they've all sent some spuds just under the surface. In general at the minute I'd say Cara has produced the bigger spuds, possibly the heavier crop, but virtually every potato so far has what I'd term wireworm damage. Then growing alongside a kestrel, slightly smaller crop, still some decent sized potatoes, no wireworm damage or none to speak of. Obviously there's an odd potato that's damaged but that's all it is, just an odd potato. So we'll carry on and see what we get off the rest. Kestrel and Vival Kestrel. Kestrel and Cara are lifted and both have produced some large really good baking potatoes which I guess is what we want off our main crop but that's where the similarity ends because Cara are probably 90% damaged by wireworms. Take you across and have a look at those. So Cara has produced some really good sized potatoes, but nearly everyone has some wireworm damage. So that one looks alright from this side, so I think I might have picked a good one. Look, here we are. There's one that's okay, but most are like this one. It's a really good potato looking at it that side, but there's just a couple of little holes damaged by wireworm. So I'm not too sure what I'll do with those. I might sort them out. Just save the best ones if we step across and have a look at the kestrel ones. Again, some really nice large potatoes in here. It's uh, one for example and these are probably 90% okay. Let me 
10% or even less with some wire worm damage. So I've still got a few roots of Vivaldi to dig up, six roots of Vivaldi in that space over there and um, there looks to be eight roots of Sapo Mira but I'm going to have a cup of coffee now before I uh, get on and do anything else got part way through digging this bed I cleared it, got the weed control fabric off and made some attempt to get rid of some of the horseradish managed to get some of the young pieces out but the more mature pieces I think go down to Australia they're going to take some getting out I thought it'd be quite cool digging today but in actual fact it's turned out sunny and warm so it's quite hard going that plus the fact that the soil is reasonably dry and lumpy so Martin's making a coffee now and hopefully after coffee I'll return refreshed and may be able to do a bit more. So we'll get back to you later. All the spuds are up now. So I'll show you what I got far from Sapomira and Vivaldi. So Palmyra, not a bad crop. Some decent sized spuds, more wireworm damage than I think I'd really like. 50% say. A bit of a guess that. I think I might give them a miss another year. And I've got our Vivaldi drying off over in the sun over here. They've got less wireworm damage. Certainly grow them again. Not saying that some of them have certainly got wireworm damage. Some decent sized spuds. Give, give them another go. And as for the ground, it's much drier than I thought it. Well, I thought it might be dry because we haven't had much rain in the last month. I would have liked to get it dug over, but I think I'm going to cover it back over with the weed control fabric to keep as much moisture in as I can and then bring the cultivator down one day and see if I can dig through it with that because I've tried with the fork and some of these lumps won't break down and if they dry up they'll be even worse so I'm going to put weed control fabric back over this plot and hope that keeps some of the moisture in. I finished digging over this bed now. It's quite weird really digging it because some bits are really dry and powdery and other bits are quite claggy and lumpy. Got quite a few weed roots out. Even with the weed control fabric on you still get weeds growing underneath. So now we're going to cover it back over again to try and retain some of the moisture until Martin gets a chance to bring his cultivator down and run over it with the cultivator to try and get a better tilth. Anyway, we're going to have a coffee now. A second cup of coffee and also try out one of our fiesta apples so we'll see you over by the shed before we have a cup of coffee we've decided to pick a couple of apples for a treat so the first one we're going to pick is a fiesta we're going to try and pick it yeah we're going to try and pick it i'll settle for that yeah not a very big zap, big apples because we haven't thinned them out, but they're plenty big enough for us, aren't they? They are. We can always have two. Yeah, as we're going to do now. So the next one we're going to pick 
is a tickled pink. We've got a diversion. These are the dwarf beans, was it safari, safari yeah. that we put in after we took out the potatoes. And they've got some little beans on, haven't they? Yeah. The so sunflowers are growing quite well too, aren't they? Yeah. So the next apple we're going to pick is a tickled pink. So I'm going to go for one of these here then. One of these. Okay. Tickled pink is quite a special apple which we'll show you in a moment when we cut it in half. It's quite a surprise. Don't know if you can tell from this, but the tickled pink is a very dark red apple. It actually has dark pink blossom too, which we'll stick a little picture up in the corner to show you. Not to find a knife. <laughs> A knife always helps when you want to cut something in half. Which one shall we do first? Do Let's do ordinary? Fiesta first. Ordinary. How dare you. It's Fiesta. It's ripe as well because the... Yeah. Pips are brown, aren't they? Yeah. And now, tickled pink. And the reveal. Tickled pink is actually... It even stains things. Pink. Yeah, red all... Well, red almost to the core. And as Martin says, it does stain... As you can see, so, it's stained the that's kitchen an roll. Comparison. It's quite a tarty apple, isn't it? Yeah. But we like it. So now we're going to enjoy these with our coffee. Just excuse Martin clattering the knife. I'm and coffee, <laughs> and we'll see you again in a bit. Sorry we can't make you a cup of coffee as well but there you go. YouTube hasn't mastered that yet. We thought we'd finish off with today's harvest. Uh, minus 60 kilograms of potatoes that are already in the car and I'm not getting them back out for a photo yeah, call. Yeah so what's that about 130 odd pounds? Knows, I don't know. Something like that. Two and a bit times isn't it? So, the rest of it, well, we managed some radishes, didn't we, which are... We did. And we managed to pick us. them before they uh, Got too became long. too big. Too the, hopefully not there's a woody. mixed... It was a mixed variety. And then, major achievement, this. <laughs> spring onions. <laughs> spring onions, yes. First we, time for years. It is. We grew them in a... Crate, didn't we, with yeah. some compost? So and that it seems, seems to, have to have worked. worked. And I've sown some more in the hope that it's not just a so Do the easy bits first Discovery apples, some Joan Jay raspberries, yeah. and gold raspberries. The old gold are the one that sneaked in when I moved them. Yeah. It's very difficult to tell which cane was which, and they used to share a bed, didn't they? Yeah. And I've obviously transferred an old gold in among a couple, the... a couple of tubs of outdoor tomatoes there's sun gold rosella rosella shirley yeah i think they're shirley aren't they mm. a bit of rudolph broccoli some celebration runner beans there's some really old ones and i've tried to pick just some young ones yeah like this 
blackberries. Yeah, again, I've tried to pick the big ones and I usually have a look in there. And if it's nice and white and there isn't a hole, there's not any nasty inside <laughs> That's it. That's right, yeah. A few courgettes, some sweet peas. And we haven't had many sweet peas, have we, this no. year? It's been a poor year for them. And then... You can decide what they're called. Yuki what's it? Yuki kiri. Anyway, winter squash, we okay, decided okay, there's no awesome leaves thing. left on, so nothing was going to happen. The leaves were all in this state, just like that. So and we picked with a handle. Yeah, so just a minute, the, picked with a handle, there you can see the handle. Yeah, it's so that if you cut it there, moisture sort of gets into the stem and it can rot the uh, squash, so... And it's a nice carrying handle. They're not very big, are they? I don't no. know how big they're supposed to grow, do you? No, I don't. And then we've got a nice little bunch of dahlias as well. They've been good this year, haven't yeah, they? Yeah, dahlias have done well, haven't they? Yeah. So all we've got to do now is manage to get this in the car with some tools and... The potatoes. Four sacks of potatoes. And us. And us. Best make an effort to get I'm that done. not walking home. No. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye, Bye. for now. Bye.